yes, I know this looks like it's another Batman video, but just like the movie in question I'm talking about, it's only one in name. Allow me to explain. <laughs> Readers, if you've seen my video on Superman Man of Tomorrow, then you already know about my excitement for DC Animation's new direction now that they've ended their shared animated universe with Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. So much so that I was eagerly looking forward to the new twists and angles that they were going to take with their next project, Batman Soul of the Dragon. And after watching it for myself, I'd be lying if I said that I wasn't impressed. It was a great homage to 70s martial art films in the style of Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon, as well as exploitation films and its black exploitation subgenre. Though, I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit worried that they'd lean a bit too much into the black exploitation, especially with how they decided to characterize Bronze Tiger at first. But considering how they handled his overall development from what we've seen in the movie, I was happy with what they did with him. However, while the film, in my opinion, is good, and while I believe Bruce Wayne's role in it is justified, considering it's an alternate universe film, it's not a Batman movie, nor do I think it needs to be one. And yes, I'm saying that as a Batman fan. Now, in order to understand why it's not a Batman movie, despite the name, we have to explain his overall use in the movie. We're introduced to Bruce Wayne about 15 minutes or so into the first act of the movie, featuring one of the best usages of one of his oldest love interests next to Vicki Vale I've seen in a while, by the way only for us to see how he began his journey in learning to master martial arts to become the Batman. Through this, we see the other main characters of the movie who he also trained with, Bronze Tiger, Lady Shiva, and the one who involves him in the movie's plot, Richard Dragon. They all trained under an individual named Osensei, who chose these individuals to help safeguard a gateway into a demonic plane containing the Naga, a demonic snake deity. And the gang has to get back together in order to stop a villainous cult that plans on releasing it. Now it's through these flashbacks that we see Bruce's connection with these characters, considering the movie assumes that you don't know who any of these main characters or villains are other than Batman. Oh, you want proof? Um, Bane's father is one of the villains in this. <laughs> Bane, <laughs> yes, that exact character. His dad is a blind martial artist with a cobra tattoo on his chest. But if you don't read comics, you never would have known that. Which is also funny because the actors who voice Lady Shiva and Bronze Tiger are actually returning to their roles after portraying them in various mediums in the past. Because of this, you see through Bruce's point of view in regards to the flashbacks. His heart to heart with O Sensei during training, witnessing how deadly and determined Shiva is, and earning the respect of Bronze Tiger. But the kicker here is that if it weren't for these flashbacks, we wouldn't really be so quick to associate Bruce as the main character of this movie. Because outside of the flashbacks establishing the exposition needed to understand the plot, the role Batman plays in Soul of the Dragon is actually minimal and has little to nothing to do with him outside of student mentor obligations. Shiva is more interested in the overall story because she was made the guardian of the Soul Sword, the same Soul Sword that would later be claimed by Katana, by the way, that's required to unlock the gate and has definitely shown said determination over the course of the film. Bronze Tiger is more invested because he's actually dedicated a significant amount of his life to fighting the Cobra Cult, trying to free the Naga, before stopping because 
he couldn't do what Rhodey was willing to do to baby Thanos in Avengers Endgame. And Richard is more invested because he was O-Sensei's oldest student and had both more of a connection with him and immediately prioritized stopping the Cobra Cult upon finding out that they had the gate. Along with, you know, being the perfect vessel for the Naga because of his association with the dragon because martial arts magic. Which would have been interesting to learn about in all honesty. But because Batman is such a focus in this movie, we don't really get a chance to find out about Richard's association with the dragon outside of O Sensei keeping him close because he's the destined host for the Naga. What I'm saying is that despite it being called Batman, Soul of the Dragon, the movie not only isn't about Batman, but directing the main attention to him does more harm to the movie than good. Because if anything, the movie should be more about Richard. He's the one who convinces Bruce to help out and get the gang back together. He's the one who has the backstory and mystical martial arts magic associated with the movie's plot that has to be explored. He's the one who's shown the most emotional connection to O-Sensei to make it feel genuine. And he's the one who fights and defeats the Naga. I'm not saying Batman shouldn't be in the movie, but considering that so much about Soul of the Dragon is centered around Richard, along with the fact that he prominently does it throughout the film anyway, <laughs> Batman should mainly be used as a support character just like he was in the Justice League animated movies that predated Justice League War. Because Batman Soul of the Dragon, despite the elements and villains that were used in it, doesn't really need Batman. Despite trying to get us to associate Bruce as the main character in the narrative by how they introduced him, this was, at heart, Richard Dragon's story. And the only reason why he's not the headline of it is because Warner Brothers didn't have enough faith that the movie would do well if Batman was in front and center. Considering the other main characters and villains that are used are regularly associated with Batman's slice of the DC universe. Which is sad. Because considering that their competitor Marvel is about to release a live action movie putting a lesser known martial arts based Asian American superhero in front and center on the silver screen, or you know, whatever screen they decide to put it in because of the current health and safety crisis, you'd imagine they'd have a little bit more faith in the DC superheroes that aren't part of its trinity when it comes to their animated movies. But, I digress readers, your homework assignment for the day. Write in the comments section below what you thought of Batman Soul of the Dragon if you've seen it. Or if you feel like sharing with the rest of the class, if you think Richard Dragon would be able to hold a DC animated movie on his own accord. Whichever you decide to answer, I'd love to know your thoughts. If you want to help financially support the channel, you can join my Patreon by clicking the card at the end of the video or in the link in the description down below, where you can also find a link to my merchandise store. Or if you prefer to give a one-time donation, you can find links to my PayPal and my coffee account in the description box as well. Also, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications because I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Friday. But until then, this is Redis 101. Class dismissed.